Are you standing at a door wondering if it's opened or if God shut it? I'm excited to share with you today a word that the Lord has given me to share with the body of Christ. On September 14th, the new Jewish year began, and it is known as the, the year of open doors with fresh springs. As I was meditating on this, the Lord began to give me scriptures about open doors, and um, I believe that we're at a, a time and a season in the body of Christ that we have a place to go and step into, into the things that God has called us each of us into. In Acts 14, 27, it says, Now when they had come together and gathered the church, they reported all that God had done with them and that uh, he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The reason this scripture is exciting to me is that we are still in the time of the Gentiles. So when I hear that God opens doors for, for other people, I'm excited because I know that He can open doors for me, and He has opened doors for me. And I believe that we're all at a place that the doors of heaven are opening up, and the Lord has a tremendous work for us to do in these last days, or at least in our lifetime. And it's to be able to preach the gospel and share with the, the world that needs Jesus. As we talk about open doors, if we, if we understand that doors are already opened and that there's just an opportunity and a time frame that we have to step through that threshold into the things that the God has for us, then uh, we're not really um, nervous or upset when we aren't sure where we are in that opening. We're not upset and really pushed into trying to make doors open. We just can rest in knowing that those doors were open. The door that the Lord has for each one of us is an opportunity to do God's will and advance His cause. Many times we want to do certain things for the Lord and we get all zealous and get excited about it, and yet it's not the right timing. But this year, the year of open doors with fresh waters, is a time for each one of us to seek the Lord and see which door is opening. I do believe that there's a time that God shuts doors for us as well, and it's for our own benefit. Maybe that season is over. Maybe there's a new time that the Lord's entering us into that has nothing to do with what we've done in the past. He may be opening doors for us to move. He may be opening doors for us into a new position in the body of Christ. Maybe He's um, giving some of you a new anointing or an added increase. But in those doors, there's always a purpose that God has for us. I like in um, Revelations 3, 7, that when a door opens, no man can shut is what that says. And many times men will step in and there will be oppositions and there will be those that will question uh, what you're doing and why you're going where you're going. But the good thing about that is that we would rather obey man. We must not obey man. We must obey God. And there's times that we come into the flesh and we, and we come into a situation where we feel threatened uh, or like we have to explain ourselves and then we begin to obey obey man but we don't we can't not in these days never in the days that we walk with the Lord should we ever obey man um, so you'll be questioned you'll be challenged you'll be um, a little uh, unsettled because it's a newness that God's doing that you've not experienced before but it's a great place to be in him in Acts 16 verse 9 it says and a vision appeared to Paul in the night and a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying come over to Macedonia Macedonia and help us and there's cries now um, that we can hear in the spirit where God's calling us that there's people that are hungry for the things of the Lord they're looking to us to come with the good news and how will they come if we don't preach? How are they going to come into the kingdom if we don't preach the word and give them the undiluted word where there's no religious spirits attached to it, where there's not doctrines of men and where there's not teachings of fables, but the truth of the gospel being preached through the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe that um, even though that there were opportunities for Paul to say no to God with the open doors, he made many places available for him. 
He was able to teach in the synagogues. He was able to teach in the marketplace. He was able to teach in prison. Many times he went into the homes uh, of family and friends and was able to preach. But the truth was is that it was God that opened the doors. I'm, I rejoice when I think about Paul being in prison and the, the, the uh, jail doors were shut. But it, when it came time for God to move Paul on to another place, those doors had to come open, even if, if it meant sending angels to help open those doors. God always, always makes a way. When I think about um, what the Lord is doing even with these doors, um, it's, a, it's also a reminder that there are things that go with open doors. We don't have to, to have a plan. And I know a lot of us that, you know, that are accustomed to being in administration or we're used to having everything perfect and organized and, and all prepared, the Lord is saying, be led by my spirit. Listen to my voice and let me take you into a place that you've never been before. And I believe that with the open doors that God is now uh, speaking to us to go back to deep, deep wells that he has dug by our forefathers and by those maybe spiritual moms and dads that were in our life that taught us deep things of God. Like in um, Genesis 26, when Isaac went back to dig up the wells that Abraham, his father, had dug, there was opposition there. Many times he um, came up against people that envied him. That was the whole point of him having to move from where he was and go to the areas where these wells were that Abraham had built because the Philistines were envious of him. And I find it interesting that, um, that it's not always the obvious things that we see when God moves us. It doesn't have to be because we're pushed by people with envy. It can be because God's just opened the, the door. But I want to go back to the point uh, the point that there is always opposition. When we're doing things for God, the devil stirred up and, and his people are stirred up as much as we can in, encourage and exhort and comfort the people of God. The enemy's camp gets upset. And then there was another second time that they build that Isaac began to dig the wells and there was a contention uh, because of them digging in the location that they were in. And so we may experience contish, uh, contention when we're digging wells and people won't understand it. There also is uh, the next time that we read in uh, Genesis 26, the digging of wells that uh, Isaac did, or his, you know, the people that was with Isaac did. And um, there was a place called a place of oath. And so there's a lot of places that when we go back to the deep things of the Lord, we might find contention. We might find envy. We might find a place that we made an oath to the Lord and the Lord's going to uh, collect on that vow. But either way, um, it's not about opposition and it's not about contention. It is about being in the place of the Lord, getting to the place that we drink of the deep wells uh, of water that he's given us. We already know that the living water of Jesus Christ is in us because Christ is. And so it's <clears throat> it's exciting to know that we are, are being brought into a place in the Lord that we can uh, be used to him and also be encouraging to others and go into a place in him that we've never done and never been before. There's a few places that I know that the Lord opened doors for me that I never expected. Um, I recently shared in a, a, a local body here in Charlotte about being in Afghanistan. That was never on the horizon for me as I in years past. If you had told me three years ago I, I would have went to Afghanistan, I would have laughed and said there's no way. But as, as it turned out, the Lord opened the doors. And when I got there, it was pretty interesting because there was a lot of things that I can't share because of, of the type of work I did. But because of that open door, I was able to be a part of an opportunity for the gospel to be preached right there on the uh, military base that I was um, stationed at. We were not able to go to the uh, military services, so the Lord made a way for uh, Pastor Terrence to be able to have church. And we, there were some of us that joined him and really helped build that work from the ground up. And um, it was exciting because what happened is that when the people heard, military and civilians heard, that we were preaching the gospel about Jesus, they were being drawn. The Holy Spirit was drawing them to you know, to the meetings, because what's happening in the military, if you know anything about it, is that there's a lot of restrictions on what can and cannot be preached in the gospel, and one of the things that cannot be preached is the name of Jesus. So we're over in our church, you know, fully 
submitted to the Lord about all the things of his word. We were seeing people saved. We were seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost. There were 17 uh, nations that represented the people that came. And so we were seeing people from Bosnia and Kenya and uh, all over the uh, countries that were coming to our meetings, but they were coming from the name of Jesus and to hear the truth that they might be set free. And so I um, was really uh, grateful that the Lord allowed me to be in Afghanistan, not just as someone that was there you know on a contract with the military with the Department of Defense but that God had a plan and he had opened that door and um, it was wonderful I was uh, about I don't know 48 miles or something not real sure exactly how many miles away from the west side of Afghanistan where I, uh, Iran is and there was a deck that we had close to our office and I'd go up on the deck and I would pray and uh, you know look to the west and declare the name of Jesus over Iran and uh, I would go and I would face the east and the north and the south and just praying for the Middle, Middle East and praying for America um, and so it was wonderful that that door had opened never thought that would happen although I've been in many nations to preach the gospel and and uh, it's been wonderful and those doors were open as well I think the the one that has surprised me the most has been being in Afghanistan and now that I'm back in America um, I don't think that anything's different um, than what the Lord would have for Afghanistan um, before I came uh, 10 days ago to Charlotte, I had received a phone call from Pastor Terrence back in Afghanistan, and he was so excited because he was talking about revival that was going on. And they had already been in four days of revival and was going to start their fifth one that night. And he said that they were going to go for as long as God's spirit was moving. Now, you have to keep in mind that when we're talking about a revival over there, those guys and gals that are coming to church at nighttime are really having to to give up some time to rest our day there would be anywhere from 12 14 16 hours or longer days day in and day out until you had an R&R &R. and for some people that was three four five six months without a day off and yet those people are committing because they're excited about the Word of God that's coming forth there and so I believe that in these end times and we're in one of the greatest transformation revivals and awakening that America and the world has ever known. The truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is going to be preached in every nation and then the return of Christ is going to happen. So I, I just present to you today and, and want to encourage you today that God has opened doors and there's wells for you to dig. They may be new, they may be old, but God said he's got water to fill you with. He's got you uh, at a threshold of excitement, even though there's all kind of chaos going on around the world in our government, uh, in other governments in the world, and we're hearing bad reports. But the good report today to you is that Jesus Christ has a door. He, stand, he is the door and he stands at the door knocking and asking you to enter in to that wonderful place of the year of doors with fresh water.